everybody to the final after show for season two, Vampire the Masquerade, Silence of Shadows, 54 episodes in the book. I just be Woo! proud of that, everybody. Just put yeah, that out there. I'm seriously. proud of that. We can make it even more proud by saying 84 yep. episodes of Vampire Total since a week before V5 launched, we've been playing, and then 90 episodes of World of Darkness content total in this kind of TTRPG universe that we've been kind of yep. creating together yeah. as a whole. Yep. That's nuts. That's freaking crazy yep. to me. And so. now's the time, if you love what we're doing, you should just like go tell World of Darkness. Like pick a platform <laughs> yeah, let them and know. go shout yeah. it at the rooftops. Let them know you love us. Yeah. Yes. Um, man, uh, so I just want, I'm just, very, very proud and just happy to see your character's growth over this season, the, where they were at the beginning of the season, where they are now. Um, we have a lot to talk about, um, mm -hmm. but we're going to kind of start the after show as we normally would do another after show. And we just want to talk about the stars of our the show, which is other players and myself, favorite moments of the episode of other players. Um, or we can even open it up to this season. I, I, don't, I don't know if we want to really restrict it, but uh, I'm going to kind of toss that open. Whoever wants to grab it first, like, do we want to talk? I think we should just talk season. We should just talk like star season. moment, moments, your favorite moments of the wow. season as a whole. Yeah. Because to give you an idea, think about we opened. We The opening scene was Beckett talking to somebody. Remember that? Yeah. That was like the opening scene. Um, needles in the arm and de dealt with your dad and all that stuff. The girl that was tied to the chair. I mean, Cammy died in season two. And that feels like forever. Forever ago. ago. So did Saito? Like, yep. Yeah, Saito like died. In, thing. Yep. Um, Crowley's death. Yep. Everybody uh, is part of that. Like it's just huge. I mean, Rowan died this season. We had a yeah. lot of like really personal and close loss. Like this yeah. season's about a lot of loss. As much as they gained a lot of things, like I feel like these characters lost a lot as well this season. Yes, yeah. they did. <clears throat> we all season suffered. two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, thematically going in, the plan for me was the loss. The loss. The loss incurred with a rise, right? And I know a lot of your characters don't feel like they rose a lot but they did it just wasn't within the camarilla it was it was right. in respect with others but there was still loss that had to be incurred in order to get there and like you know what kindred go through to get to that point and yeah your characters lost a ton this season uh, an insane amount of stuff and it was all wildly entertaining and painful in a lot of ways to watch um but we back to stars let's just throw it uh let's, i'll pick tracy tracy okay. give me one of your favorite just <laughs> scenes of the season I'm oh, one of the man. players. I guess just, just, oh, uh, just looking through, I'm looking through my notes now, just to kind of <laughs> remember all the things thing. that we've been through this season. And yeah. there, there really is a lot. Um, I think, uh, yeah, some of my favorite, uh, we've already talked about it a million times, but uh, one of the times that I've cried the most in a TTRPG ever, and I've cried a few times in, sh in different shows and things, but I think we've all had moments where we cried. I, oh God. In this show, when, yes. When, when, uh, when Ollie with um, with Rowan, that which happened recently, uh, yeah, oh yeah, that was oh my god, that was so emotional, and it was um, amazing role play by by you, Bub, um, with mm -hmm. that whole thing. Um, I just, it. It, yeah, it was an incredibly emotional moment, um, and that really, uh, I, that was one that significant was very significant to me. Um, definitely, uh, everything that we had with our guest characters. Um, with Saito and uh, Kami uh, was, oh <laughs> my gosh, yes, oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know Kami were person. absolute treats. Maggie, I know you're there somewhere, but yeah. Kami was, Kami Kami was, was such an amazing great. character that went a trajectory I didn't expect her to when we introduced her, but she held true to her character really perfectly. And her death, while, while untimely, I really enjoy how we kind of did that. I like how we, we took her away quietly in a car and then the next time we see her is just with Ava. Yeah. Oh. Um, absolute oh. treat. I, I, yeah. I want to I wanna double up and echo that scene with Rowan simply because it was not planned. Like mm -hmm. I think we've talked about in other after shows, but Rowan, when I went into this season, the plan with Rowan was him to be the final confrontation, kind of like the final boss of you, if you will. Um, I want him to be the penultimate episode uh, the last episode instead of the sheriff. Um, I had other plans for the sheriff, uh, but you know, this TTRPGs in general. Uh, and there was just no way to take what that dice roll, what was happening, the fact that he had potence on, is just no way to take that. That moment was pure improv um, on both of our parts. And like mm -hmm. that was not part of the grander plot in my mind, but that shifted the that shifted fucking everything and, and watching that scene play out. Cause I didn't have to do too much role play. You, in my mind, you crushed his neck. He couldn't say anything. It was just yep. visual. 
and uh, to watch you as as Ollie just, you know, just have to deal with what it was just it was really 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 incredible to watch. So yep. I want to double up that that saw, that scene was great. I think we should just go around by the way and just pick a favorite scene for each character that we've had. Um, that's definitely uh, one of mine. My last final uh, favorite, I think, for highlight and star for this season was the closeness that Dakota and Ava were slowly getting. Um, the scenes were- Every the, girl's night. The episodes, oh, the, so much fun we had. <laughs> they were we so my favorite so ones. Fun. We had so much yeah. fun. Yeah. And <laughs> those will forever be stars for me. Um, I just, oh, I enjoyed the hell out of those sessions. Yeah, they were so good. Yeah, their ship has become really important for Dakota. Cause like I yeah. said, like uh, yeah. I told them this when we, when we broke, but like even today, had Ava not said something, Dakota would have frenzied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason she got up and left was because, because Ava was like, it's gonna be all right. Dakota's like, it's gonna be all right if I leave. It's gonna yeah. be okay <laughs> yeah. if I leave. Um, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. again, to just the, that it was a, uh, yeah, yeah. Watch holding hands while they watch the sheriff's little house and personal whatever yes. burn was just such a good scene. Art, yeah. art, I one day just want to commission somebody of art for that scene because it was so good. Oh, like, God. Yeah, I, mean, I love it. <laughs> the, 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 with the girls' night episode after the first one, I just planned not to plan anything with the girls' night oh, episode because yeah. <laughs> usually had your idea. We just had to wait own. for Ollie not to Genuinely. be there so we could be yeah. like, "I want to do something really mischievous." Yeah. 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 I, mean, like, I think I think I tried to like had an idea for the first one, but it very quickly just went not the right the way I thought it was going to. Um, yeah. So yeah, do that... in the first one. What was the first one? Was that the Halloween episode? It might have been. The I, Halloween. There, was, yeah. there were so the many first time we episodes. went to the Painted Lady. That was the very first time we went. Oh, to the that's Lady. right. Yeah. yeah, and and how impactful that became for Dakota. Yes. Too. Oh, the Painted yeah. Lady like is great place. to introduce. That's yeah. such a cool place. I'm so glad it like Dakota clicked with it so well. Yeah. Um, that was super fun. And so you you mentioned like things you want to see in art. That just reminds me of another scene, the stand down, Ollie giving into the frenzy. Yes. And, oh like, my god that moment that between so ava true. and like dakota <laughs> and ollie all together and like just that oh, that, that so whole good. moment because you just you're like facing the hulk like what do you yeah. do when the hulk is staring at you with an intent you to stand, punch a hole you stand you? together and hope you can kill him <laughs> it was yeah know? yeah it um yeah, that was, I, it's interesting because I think we have all frenzied at some point. We saw Ava frenzy in the yeah. labyrinth, like yeah. we were down mm -hmm. there in the in the prison, and which we had to hold her down for oh, and like wait yeah. through that, right? We've seen Ava frenzy a few times. We've got to finally see Ollie frenzy and fix that. And then we saw Dakota frenzy at the, like really frenzy at the end because of what the sheriff did. And so there was like this moment where the coterie all had to have each other's back in that. Because here's the thing, like if you alone ask Kindred, right, you're doing yeah. your own thing and you frenzy, you've got nobody to have your back. Right. Right. Each one of in each of those moments, we all needed the uh, the rest of the coterie to like have our back. And it, every time it just I feel like it solidified a little bit more of like why we're working together and really not as alone as we yep. even may want to be. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah. Uh, continue on then. Uh, what about you, Dot? Hit me with some of your favorite moments for the other two characters okay, of okay. the season. Well, so I started out. Um, I, I took really good notes to start and then we went. Uh, so, OK, I. Yeah, the the Ava eating a corpse scene is an is another I'm sorry. amazing scene. Oh wow! One of the I... things that I I that's actually that's really the start of Dakota and Ava's massive friendship mm -hmm. was when Ava when when Bella called Dakota in to watch Ava consume that body, mm -hmm. and then Dakota watching Ava do that, and you know Dakota came to Ava afterwards and she's like, I didn't think you had it in you. We are going to take over the world. Yep. If you keep if you stay strong, the things that the two of us could do together will be. <clears throat> unheard of um and as hard as like other people in the coterie may have tried to break that or outside people outside of the coterie may have tried to convince her otherwise like dakota from that moment was like ava is so much stronger than we give her credit for um right they under yeah. people underestimate her and dakota related with that in like a really deep way yeah um, do yeah. do yeah. we <laughs> think that was the grossest scene of all season two <laughs> Probably. Do we think that was the nastiest horror scene, the most body horror? I'm trying to think. I think uh, I think Saito's death was pretty horrific. Remember oh, how sure. horrible it was oh, where we like yeah. they drug his soul into oblivion? Like yeah. I remember that one oh, particularly gosh. sticking with me for some reason. Not necessarily more or less than another, but there was something really visceral about like the concept of dragging his soul into mm -hmm. into oblivion. That really, um, that one really got me. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't Very know that sense. that's body horror. So, no. Okay. And then I mean, I but still, okay, continue. Um, okay. So we could talk about the humanity shift, which I want to put on the table too, because we had a lot of humanity shifting this season, mm. which I thought was really interesting. But one of the ones that I think was, this was when Dakota was still humanity four. Okay. 
um, was the scene with Ollie. Look, I drew it where he <laughs> gave us all drinks. Um, like I made, I made like a note of it uh, because yeah. Dakota couldn't enjoy that moment. And it was mm-hmm. kind of a big deal for her because everybody else yeah. could. And she was like, I don't get what all of you mean. And it's put me on the outside again. And so that was huge for Dakota. But also I think it was a really great moment for Ollie, right? Like we got to see... Um, I don't know why that one just really sticks with me where you get to see this little piece of Ollie that's like bringing something from his past to the table that is now sharing it with his coterie, being vulnerable with his coterie. Um, and then we could just highlight like every scene that he and Grant have, right? Um, the the very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then my other favorite Ollie moment, which I think is just so telling of both Ollie's strength and his flaws, which is when uh, What's Her Face came into the bar and made him frenzy or no she didn't make him frenzy she made him run didn't she uh what's her name your sire um Sianna. Oh, Sianna. 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 Yeah. Sianna. Sianna. when sianna yeah. came in and flexed the fuck oh i remember uh, inside that. of ollie's bar she flexed hard um mm-hmm. i thought it was interesting because ollie ollie just so didn't want to back down like this is and so i, I those kinds of moments of the most friction make for the most interesting things because now ollie is giving 100 percent into giving and making this a place where things like that can't happen Mm -hmm. Um, and I just think it's so telling of like the events that lead to a character's growth and in that kind of way. So, um, those are, those are some moments. Um, I'm going to give Mathis a star too, because you're here at this table. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to give you a star too. Um, I got a lot of stars for Mathis. Um, I have to say, Mathis, I've played in a lot of TTRPGs. I don't know that there's a person that plays a catty bitch better than you. (laughs) You do. (laughs) Bella is, Bella is just horrible and whether or not because some I, we're kind of figuring that maybe it's not bella maybe it's actually been Sybil. we're not really sure where that line is but you made some major choices as like the political leaders like as bella uh in this game that really just it, she knows how to turn the knife and not mm-hmm. just today like i think leading up to all of this everything from the subtlety of like manipulating us and using this coterie to, to for her her gains and her mm. rise to like um like realizing that she didn't even really give a shit about Dakota, right? That all of that was also just its own kind of form of manipulation and the way that she manipulates all of us. I just thought it was um she's she's a very powerful figure. Um and we I think we saw more of her in the last season, but this Yeah, in season 1 she was her, more prevalent for sure. Mm-hmm, prevalent, but it almost made her an always prevalent figure mm. because we didn't actually have one-on-ones with her. And when we Mm-mm. did, the stakes were so hella high. Um, and so I think that just really praises you as like a GM, the way that you build NPCs that we fall in love with, like Grant, um, yep. it's just really, um, it's a testament to the way that you build a world and you, you let these characters like thrive inside of a world. And um, I just want to give you a star for that, sir. I don't know oh, that that's one moment. It. It's a lot of moments, but. No, I appreciate, um, I, I appreciate yeah. it. I'm, I'm just glad you guys enjoy and can interact with it. And, uh, you know, are able to just take a take take what I put before you and just fucking sprint with it. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I couldn't, um, again, I couldn't do it. And any always of this taking our crazing ideas because that's the other thing. I know the <laughs> messages you get uh, when we're not on screen, uh, and you get so many just like massive walls of text. It's like I got this idea, <laughs> I want this thing. <laughs> Give me my XP dump. You know, like I know yeah. you have to deal with all the BS. I always too, feel like I feel like I tend to be. I feel like I tend to be too strict sometimes, and I try not to be. I just want things to fall within a certain realism in a way and not get too crazy mm-hmm. you know i like just because i, but like I think that's my really that cool way. the way that the table has to like remain super grounded and we reel yeah. things in and like there's a high a high realism to it which which makes it all the more believable so well, thank you um, i appreciate it yeah yeah totally um i don't know i've tossed out a bunch of moments i got y'all i got i got moments upon moments upon moments we can, we can throw it to bub and see what his his are right like, yeah bub you start because i'm just like <laughs> Man, just replaying through so many episodes makes it uh, really hard to kind of like highlight a singular moment because I, I don't know if I can. I, I've got I've got to highlight the player though. Uh, the players here, well, they've they've always been just completely on board with just about absolutely everything. Um, rarely is there ever a no, and if there's a no, it's it's for a damn good reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You you guys have managed to evolve my own role play. Help me understand how to be a better role player and improvisational actor. Uh, additionally, um, I've got a, if I, if I am, if I am forced to highlight some things, I will say that um, Dakota's change from season one, okay. beginning season two to the end of season two is such an evolution. I think it is quite literally the epitome of watching a kindred come to life. 
um, the struggle, particularly for a gangrel. I don't know of anyone that can can play a gangrel better. Like you set a fucking bar. All right. Thanks, dude. Yeah. For sure. I, I, the gangrel. They're real personal to me. Like the first time I read through the VTM five book, I was like, I'm sorry. I, it was between Bruja or Gangrel, and yeah, I'm rebellious. But there's something about the Gangrel spirit mm. that's mm -hmm. really just personal to Dot. And so I thanks Bub for saying that. That means a lot. I I, I think I'm gonna be hard pressed moving forward to find um you know like anybody else that can even stand up to that or even touch that bar. I, I know that there's gonna be points going forward that I'm gonna sit down on another table with a different SD and crew. And someone's gonna be a gang girl, and I'm just gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> "Why'd you bother? You're not in a gang girl." Yeah, my dude, <laughs> my dude. Good luck, good luck. Um, but like, additionally, I I also have to highlight Tracy here, um, mm -hmm. particularly in season two. You brought it, you brought it. Season one, it, we were all relatively like, I'm I'm be honest. Season one, I didn't know shit about vampire. I didn't Me, know a single none of you did. Nope, well, we yep, showed up. None we of babes. us did. <laughs> Yep. The and what knowledge I had <laughs> was in what knowledge I had got wiped away because V five was introduced and that just changed so much of the lore. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was nuts. Ava's growth was uh, phenomenal. Uh, season one, we were basically just flying by the seat of our pants. By season two, like I felt like we had a solid grip, even if we had changed. And I think the highlight moment is how you stuck to your guns about your motivations and actions of season one, mm -hmm. knowing that Ollie was trying to pick a fight with you in mm -hmm. season two, especially the beginning. He wasn't trying to be catty, but he was basically being like, that was a bitch thing to do. Mm -hmm. And you need to know that was a bitch thing to do. And eventually he got over it. And I mean, by the end of it, he was like, I will eat another kindred for you. Yeah, yeah. That, That's what yeah. happened this episode. Like, I will eat someone for you because yeah. that's just how close that, that bond is. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was huge. I, I, I would be, it would be an, an accident or even a problem for me to not mention that. So that's huge. You guys brought it brought it every session and that was huge um so i i i think that's that's fantastic i mean additionally uh, i would be also i'd be remiss to, to not compliment mathis um mm -hmm. he brought it as well uh never really know knew what i was getting into and to um, your own frustrations many time for everybody here <laughs> yeah. um i gotta say chat your own hubris <laughs> you can never tell where the story is going because you all kept idly talking about it in chat and in the, in the discord. And that gives Mathis so, so much when he finally does check in and read it. He's like, so don't think I'm read. going here. Guess mm -hmm. what, nerds? I'm going here. <laughs> My, so. The thing I strive to do when it comes to this is like, I don't want, well, because there's uh, when I do read, there's like a lot of really close theories, people who are on the right path. But those who get it, get it. I'm not going to confirm who's got it, who doesn't. But like, right. I don't want to change the story just to like throw you a curveball. You know what I mean? Sure. I want you to look, be able to look back at the episodes and see the path that led yeah. to the answer and be able to put the pieces together. Even if some of it's a little messy, cause we are improving a lot of it. And there's a couple parts I'm sure where I messed something up, but I mean, that's, that's all that matters to me is people are engaged with the story, you know, and yeah. you know, kind of going on character arcs, Ava, I agree. Ava's Ava was one of my favorite ones to watch as well, because <clears throat> she rose so high at the end of season one only for her youth to make her crash back down to, to silly decisions or uh, things that were forced on her. I mean, the big the big thing for the Sybil decisions that for a while when I would check into the Discord, it seemed like the Discord didn't quite get it. But I think people have a more better understanding now is that the story with Sybil is that you were given choices with enormous air quotes. Like yeah, that was right. the story I wanted to tell with Ava was the story of these false choices of this and you mean you can call it what you call it is like an emotional abuse relationship with with this other character because she's giving you choices but is she really and a lot of the time ava felt like she made the wrong choice but in reality the other choice was just to end her own on life or the on life of her friends yep. and so to watch her rise then fall then have to take those choices to kind of build back up only to have a rise again on the latter half of the season but it to be a dark rise like this rise of the dark rose who Trouble is presented in front of her and she doesn't, she always mingles in it, but she mingles in it much more intelligently now <clears throat> before where she might just fucking throw herself into yeah. it. Now she sees it and she's like, yeah, I'm going to fuck around with it, but I'm going to do it in a way that I'm clean and I can, uh, and I can influence power over these people and maneuver throughout the society. And it was that, it was that reintegration to the Rose Garden that we got to kind of got to watch Ava take. That was so fascinating to watch because I didn't know which way Ava was going to go. I had no idea if she was going to go for her humanity again and try to like redeem herself. If she was just kind of going to be, you know, give up and just be like, fuck everything. 
but she, you know, you took her a completely different route than I was expecting in this dark rise of like what a lot of kindred idealize themselves as being. Mm. And it was just fascinating. Like all your characters had such fucking great arcs this season. Yes, I 100% agree. Yeah, it's just, it's nuts. So yeah. <clears throat> that's the season. What about, what about, no, no, what about your wish or your, your, your stars? Oh yeah, all right. Your stars. I jumped on all of yours and I agree with a, all yeah. of you. I want to take a second though uh, to additionally, like, I want to highlight Josh and Maggie. Yes. Well, oh yeah, they're not here, yes. in, but yeah. They, they, they also brought it and yes. they yeah. challenged our perceptions of one of the clans of yeah, character yeah, yeah. motivation and action. They spurned a lot of in-game action, and I think that they also need similar applause because I agree. I mean, ass, man, man, anytime I mean, Cammy showing up for an episode is like a favorite part, just because whenever Cammy showed up, it was always intense because she was a primogen in a primogen man business. And on the other hand, whenever fucking Josh showed up, and then <laughs> chaos was about to ensue, and I had no idea what he was coming in with. A lot of the time, he would pop in. He'd throw me a little bit of an idea of what he wanted to do. And then we'd start the episode and it spins wildly out of control and it goes. That's why Dakota hated Saito. So he shows <laughs> up and that means bad things are happening. Yeah. yeah. That, he is a, he was a beckoning. The he two was like of a, you he hated a, him. Yeah. 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 And, and, so, so it's hard. difficult though. Cause like Saito actually helped Dakota out at some points. Okay. Uh, with mm -hmm. some things that really just didn't actually ever come to light. And like, yep. I imagine that Saito didn't really, wasn't about bad things. Cause we know he was somehow involved in this like moving of thin blood. So like mm -hmm. he had, he had some humanity. He just was a beckoning for bad chaos. Saito was, was a disaster. He was a disaster. He's a <laughs> he was monster like, fire. Very well put together on the surface. But the moment that he made action, it was just fire. Everything was yep. fucking fire, and yeah. that's what was so great yep. about him. Just I agree. Nuts. Uh, Just nuts. Oh man, but I mean, both of their deaths were were painful to watch. Yeah. Like I didn't want them to die. You know, that wasn't a plan yeah. going into the season. Obviously, was to have anybody die, but that's just how it happened. But each one of them was just like a, I, I you know, as an ST, I was it was either let them live, and it was kind of be audience pleasing in a way, kind of pandering, I guess you would call it. But it didn't make sense to the world and the rules I had set forth. And to have them live just felt like a disservice to the story, even if it meant saying goodbye to one of our, some two, two or three or four of our favorite characters over the course of the season, mm. as it were. But yep. it just, you know, it was one of those things where it just, you know, I had to do it. And that's, that's just how the dice roll sometimes. That's just how the decisions of stories go. And while I strive not to kill our players, I'm not that kind of, you know, ST. I don't like killing them off. I have made clear before, like, that death is on the table and certain decisions can lead to, to death um yeah. and but 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 it but it happening any every time it happened with every player it was heart-wrenching like every yeah. single one of them was just a heart-wrenching uh scene to watch so yeah man the guest characters fucking crushed it every time i'm in boss and i, <laughs> I mean, was gonna we, say boss, can we boss, shout boss out to boss coming in the oh, brief, what another shake up the brief yep. <laughs> the brief moment boss is here she did exactly what a set tight should be doing which is immediately trying to sway you to shake off the chains of, of restrictions so <laughs> yep yep it was it, yeah that was definitely a shake-up that i don't think any of us like we were we were real stable at that point and then boss comes in and is yep. like yes. yeah you devil know? on the shoulder that's what, exactly what i <laughs> yeah. wanted maggie to do too i was like she wants and to play ministry that's gonna maggie be so much it. saucy yeah yes. she was so saucy. saucy killed it. Um, uh totally killed that so your wish is bad you're yes. not getting away with no 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 absolutely my stars for for everybody here i mean We've talked about some of my favorite scenes already, um, as far as everybody good is concerned. Um, I will say one of my favorite things with Ava was also the premonitions, I, especially mm. when it was used in, in, in turn with Saito, when, when, yeah. when you do it with Saito and stuff. I love um, those. Those scenes were always interesting, not only because you learned a lot about your character, I and mean, again, and we haven't forgotten this, but you were supposed to be a La Sombra. That was a season two reveal as well. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I think that happened, but... To, to then bring it out and watch the coterie try and pick apart what you saw. And I just, as, as an ST, I like to sit back and just watch and just see what theories come out. And that was always something that I heavily enjoyed. What are you shaking your head for, Dot? I remember the moment we realized it was Ida in that vision from the beginning of the season. Mm. That mm -hmm. I remember being one of the most palpable realizations live. Dot was like, it was Ida! Like, I remember <laughs> freaking out. I think my mic was muted for it, but I remember that moment. You just said that, and that, I, uh, that visual reaction. It all came you, rushing you, back. It all came rushing back, but I think you're right. Like, the way that we interpreted those things from Ava's visions, really, like, sometimes it would set us on course, or sometimes it set us, like, way off course. It was very yeah. interesting. You, and sometimes you would have the right idea, 
but you would latch onto it as though it was a hundred percent and you would kind of chase that only to be led to learn that it wasn't that. And I don't know, it was just, it was interesting to watch you all adapt and move. Um, as far as, uh, as far as Ollie is concerned, I always loved doing the set scenes with you as Matt. I really always, and I really enjoyed Matthew as a character, you know, kind of running the end of the story course for the most part. Um, I think we've talked about it in after shows before, but you know, Matt's story was meant to end more or less in, in, at the, just around the corner. Um, he was brought in in season one briefly and kind of made more important by the end of season one slash season two. Uh, and so the end of, you know, the reveals of what's happening to Arcadia, the reveals of, of all that, you know, we're hinting towards the fact that, you know, him at the very least is not attached to, you know, this abyss and it's killing him. It's not actually empowering him. And, you know, that kind of goodbye that we saw with, with uh, him and Ollie, where you're like, we're going to get that game. And he's, you know, kind of limping away, like, yeah, we'll get that game. And then to maybe never even get that game, you know, that was, I just enjoyed that because you always tried to bring hope out of Matt. And he was such a hopeless character who lost everything. And uh, he deteriorated to nothing. So that was always fun to go back and forth. And I hope you enjoyed that as well. Yeah, man, Matt was such a good character. And he... I wish that there could have been more interaction there. And I know a lot of people wanted to investigate the, the the whole fairy side of things, but we came from two very different worlds. We were thrown headlong into two very different worlds by rules, not of our own, and just forced to exist, but not really having anyone else to sort of rely on or build a relationship with. I was there for it. Yeah, uh, I agree. I really enjoyed that too, because one of the things that's like tempting is like when you bring in those kind of other supernatural things is to dive in and explore those as fully as possible. And then yeah. the campaign can get mucked, mucked up a bit. And uh, it's not, you know, I want to bring those things in, but I always want them to be kind of on the outskirts because vampires don't mess with that too heavily anyway. So I'm happy to wrap that up. Yeah. And obviously we'll talk about it again a little bit, but the thorn in the side reveal and like mm -hmm. that kind of thing we'll talk about. Which does yeah. bring me to Dakota, which is, this is, God, it's so many fucking moments I have with Dakota as well. Um, one, the whole finally kind of figuring out what happened at the cabin for the most part, um, the truth in that, that's just, because what sucks it, what, what, what sucks for Dakota as a character, not as a, a player, I think it's amazing as a player, is Dakota got kicked in a lot this season. Reveals that just made, that just kind of beat her into the ground constantly and constantly and constantly. And the, we saw Dakota kind of many times ready to throw in the towel. I mean, there was discussions yeah. as well off camera, I think around half the season, maybe the About first halfway half. halfway through, I was yeah. like, I think Dakota's going to leave Chicago. Yes, that's what, that was exactly what I was going to say, that conversation that we had on Discord about uh, Dakota leaving Chicago and being gone and to see where she's come from uh, as far as that is concerned. Uh, the, 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 I, I think back constantly to the scene because I didn't mean for it to be so frustrating for Dakota, but when she got assaulted by the sheriff, when she got jumped by the sheriff and then I think a lot of the scene she had with Bella after that and man, Bella really set her off because I think what yeah. we didn't get was to know that like Bella had serious feel or Dakota had serious feelings for Bella. That's what yeah. the bond did to her is it, it made her have these unnatural obsessive uh, want of Bella's love. And she gave every, I'll tell you this, had Bella not done that, Dakota would have given Bella anything. Oh, I know. Anything. Oh, she aware. would have sure Bella had done, you know, all the things. But yeah, no, it was. Yeah, I don't think and you knew Bella it was, was going to set Bella off or Dakota yeah. off, you know? Yeah. I mean, and if Bella was a perfect leader, you know, she would have done so. But, you know, she has her own uh, flaws and the like. But with, yeah. with Dakota, it was those moments that, I mean, oh, God, there's just because Dakota's so fucking complex, which is why I love her. But right. it's just like she's just so. <laughs> I mean, another the, the the scene where you make the decision to save the little girl is another one I think back to because that completely changed the trajectory of a NPC I didn't think would escape, uh, and to led to a guardianship that when when she did escape, I was like, this could be really cool. But to watch it kind of turn into something I wasn't even like, I didn't know how Dakota was going to handle it. I just knew I wanted to see this side of Dakota because we've we've talked off camera too. A lot of big Dakota's changes in season two was the realization of self-reliance in a lot of ways. Yes. Because yeah. she always, as we started season two, she always was looking for someone to look up to. And when we talked, I was, you know, the idea of making this little girl the, the tool to help Dakota realize she doesn't need anyone else. And right. I feel like we we saw that at the, we clearly saw that at the end of the season, with especially when Jackson came into the picture and you started making moves as Dakota, which is every scene with Jackson and Dakota from the building of the trust until building uh, the trust has been built, has been great. 
oh, there's so many goddamn stars for everybody. Can they, you know, yeah. like, and this is so, so many things. Yeah, there's so many things. Remember. Hey, we, uh, another big highlight for this season is we got our own domain. We got our own territory. Yes, we, we got our own haven. And mm-hmm. really, like, that's a big the accomplishment. The theater for was us. a really under, under expected. I remember when we yeah. finally got the territory because we, we as players <laughs> have been working so hard towards it. The characters yeah. have been working so hard. Then we got it. Nobody was like, what? What, what do we, we do, do now? now? <laughs> yeah. we have, we have, we like we actually have a stoop to piss on, but like you know what I mean. Yeah. So how do we um, how do very, we handle uh, yeah, this? How do we handle it? And so yeah. there was a it was very interesting in the conversation around like what's the main building going to be? What is the haven? And the way that the theater kind of took on this like position of its own uh, for the coterie. Mm-hmm. And like the first time we got to host something there, which showed this kind of. I thought this potential for the future of like, mm-hmm. now we've got a place if we wanted to host Elysiums or mm-hmm. other influential kindred for events. Like it just- um Baby chorus concert, you know? The big baby chorus great. concert. Like what an important huge great. thing for us because let's think about our first party. <laughs> yeah, which we were reminded of <laughs> by, by Rhonda. Uh, Rhonda will never forget um, that pathetic gathering. <laughs> yep. Hey, Rhonda can suck it. Uh, <laughs> I don't need Rhonda's approval. Um, yeah. So like, uh, yeah, but I thought that was, it was kind of cool. And like even Baby Chorus coming in at the end, another really interesting kind of not directly connected high up in the Camarilla connection mm-hmm. still, yeah. you know, like. Um, you built connections with influential influence. kindred who don't necessarily hold roles in the government, mm-hmm. which arguably are the most powerful kindred in the city anyway. And I, and that was really fun to watch. Um, well, I mean, we can keep talking about the season. I'm sure we'll yeah, keep, yeah. We'll, we'll keep reckoning back to it, but we should talk about the final episode mm-hmm. finally. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, take questions from chat if that's uh, yeah, yeah. Any questions for us. But I know it was a bit shorter. I didn't, I, there was not a lot I wanted to cover. The penultimate was mm-hmm. going to be the action episode in my mind. And it really was. And it was a great fight to watch. Um, but you had already set the pieces in motion over the past m- couple of months IRL, like two to three months IRL, to have these people of power start sliding into positions and having more leeway. So today was much more to see the ramifications of actions, the last political attempts of those who are in power, some more reveals and to watch you guys debate about theories and then kind of to wrap up your each individual positions as to what's happening with your characters and where you're going to kind of be found after the end of season two here. Um, kind of just open the door for you guys to take it. I don't really know. I don't want to kind of harp and talk mm-hmm. about it constantly. So, Well, so I, I feel like we should actually, we'll start at the end and I guess then we can work through some, mm-hmm. the realization. See, here's the thing. Sybil, <laughs> Sybil fucked up. <laughs> Sybil let us know that she took Bella's body, sure. mm-hmm. which was the first, it was an interesting puzzle piece we didn't have. We yeah. thought she was gonna take Ava's body, no. Mm-hmm. but I, her revealing right to Ava that us. she didn't need it, this whole right, time. that she didn't actually need it, changed yep. everything there at the end, like, changed mm-hmm. everything. And so like for Dakota, that was a highlight. She's like, she doesn't want your body for her. <laughs> she wants your body for him. Right. And it was, yeah. um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting how the smallest reveals, like the littlest mm, of yeah. things can actually be the, the exact puzzle piece needed to like see the full picture or just see more of an image than we had before. <clears throat> um, and so I thought it was really cool for our coterie to just have that moment mm-hmm. together at the end yeah. of like <laughs> that last little, like, uh, you know, not notch, uh, in the puzzle was really satisfying. <laughs> it yeah. was really satisfying. <laughs> Uh, it's scary to think now that, you know, Bella is gone. Like, wow, <laughs> I can't believe that she's gone and it's going to be just Sybil now. Um, it's kind of scary. <laughs> like in a way, Bella, like always kind of, she had something about her that she was, I wasn't fully afraid of her. She definitely did a lot of the horrible things to Dakota and to Ava. Um, but I just kind of felt like we we had a way to get back at her or we were like planning all the stuff. And now it's like, well, now now it's gonna be Sybil moving forward. And that's just, I don't know, it kind of changes the the dynamic a bit every time we talk with her and just, just knowing that I'm just like, oh my gosh. So yeah, um, I that was a big, big reveal for sure. I, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, I wanted, I wanted a certain, I mean, for, for various reasons, I wanted certain things to be, to be revealed. Um, do you, do you all think, why do you think she's able to possess her so easily if she's still sleeping? Uh, I mean, the answer is so, pretty important when you think about it. Uh, I, I mean, the, the shadow, uh, the, she, the La you know. Sombra, because she's, uh, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Shadow that was delivered yeah. in season one. Shadow, yeah. So she yeah. just always could have done that. And she just was like, she chose I'm not good. to because she, she wanted to trust to. Bella. That's her whole thing. She chose not to. It's like, trust, trust, trust. And I guess Bella pissed her off. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Sounds like Bella fudged up. Off. <laughs> yeah. <makes me> <laughs> Let's be real. What makes me, what makes me wonder is uh, is the body. The where, body. where is the body? Her her body. You mean yes. a simple's yeah. body? Yes. I mean, you can't just like you can't just. It's not like red light. Like it's, you're not like two cars sitting at a stoplight, and you just decide. Nah, I'm just gonna hop out and hop right in this one. And the other car's just stuck sitting there. Well, that begs the question. Is she as powerful as she claims she is while she's using she's Bella's not. That's body? That's why she's doing all of this. She's <laughs> like, not. She can't be as powerful yeah. as she thinks she is, or she would have already made much bigger plays. Like she's still biding time because I think she's building strength. I I I don't think she's like she's evil, but she's not Sith Lord. All right, I think mm -hmm. she's just she's got big balls, right? And she's pulling some some huge plays. And she's catty. And she's catty. So I think I think her body is still under. Under the ivory tower, or in I Chinatown, or wherever the fuck it. it's at. I think I think it's in Chinatown. I think they moved it over the ten years. Yeah, yeah, what? wherever it's at. I think it's. I've had a, yeah, I've had a theory that Saito actually helped with that, but I I don't have proof of it. Aww. I have a, I have a gut feeling that Saito helped with theory. that move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you may be right on that. I mean, you'll never but know I, I because can't, Saito Dot is gone can't now. Prove so. it. Yeah, and Dakota definitely can't prove it, and would never piece that together. So, uh, but I think I definitely think that they that moved her body. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, he yeah, did I tell definitely. us that that he uh, that there were he, he lost time. Yes. Yes. Multiple mm -hmm. times he said, I, I lost time. I don't know where I was. I don't know what was going on. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I, I think that he was super, super used. Um, it just makes me wonder then, anytime that she could like body. anytime that she could ride someone. Does that mean she had access to their disciplines, too? I wonder. Probably. Maybe. But I imagine that we don't have access to her disciplines because there's not actually her blood running. Correct. Through them. Yeah. Right. So she has to use the disciplines of whoever she's like inhabiting, which is why she wants all the puppets. She needed a Saito and she needs an Ava. Right. And she like so she she went out and she was like, I can't use my disciplines, but I can use the disciplines of everybody else. That's no fair. Damn you, Mathis. <laughs> well, why? Why is that not fair? He's like, that's fair game. Nobody said I couldn't he's do a, that. She's a Methuselah, man. Yeah, of course. She's using everybody else's powers. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was a, uh, she's a mm, Sybil. She's either going yeah. to also fuck up. Like I'm waiting for her to make a big mistake. Um, I'm also interested at what point does she reveal that she's here? Is she, uh, is she going to play this whole thing off under the cup, uh, like under the covers, or is she actually going to like toss the sheets back and let everybody eventually see that she's here. And I look forward to that fallout. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. The venture is certainly not happy about the La Sombra seating being, uh, seat yeah. being uh, primogenized. Um, but hey, I got to introduce yeah. another. Uh, I got to introduce two more canon characters. Yeah. Uh, that that are in the city, Alexa, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, oh, Von the Malk. Right? Yeah, she the was Malk. like somebody Sierra. I trust. Yeah. Oh, Dakota could have ripped her fucking throat. Out. <laughs> yeah, that was the moment Dakota's that. like, I'm not gonna make it. The Malk, <laughs> this. Mm -hmm. the Malk definitely needed representation. And yeah. That, yeah, that totally they made did. sense. Yeah. Yep. Having having a, the mouth having uh, hound. Hound. Yeah. Yep. Alexa. Yeah. And then the uh, Permagen Lasombra seat and the removal of the Gangrel seat, which politically, for the most part, um, the kindred in, in Chicago understand because there isn't a lot of representation. So here's my question: Gangrel. How many more Lasombra are there than Gangrel? Uh you don't know. You have no idea. Out of game. I mean, I can. Mm -hmm. it, I'll say like I don't know, maybe a handful more. I can't. I bet it's it's less than ten. It's it's got to be. Yeah, I'm less guessing less. I'm guessing five max. Yeah. which means that technically <clears throat> that's a really weak argument. I know, that's what I was thinking. That's a really <laughs> fucking weak argument. And Bella knows it. That yeah. shit was catty. She did yeah. that. Oh, I'm perfect. It's, it's, it's With totally the growing, targeting. Um, yeah. I was like, what? what it was personal. Like five of them. Like, <laughs> really? like, come on. You did not need to seat a La Sombra. Like, I, I have to say though, Jackson was a very interesting balance to Bella because we hmm. see a very different kind of politics out of Jackson yes. and I really appreciated his presence in that regard because I think we've seen a lot of caddy Toreador politics leading up to this mm -hmm. season and then to finally get some time with people like Ballard right and see some, 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 uh, somebody like Ballard working and then somebody like Jackson um, and to have Jackson even reveal to us it's like I don't like this old guard way of thinking yeah Right, and yep. to see that that's clearly affected Damien because Damien has made some interesting statements. Um, and yeah, there's just um, it was cool because we had to see both two two different sides of a coin. Um, I thought this season, um, and Jackson mm -hmm. kind of brought that. I mean, even at the end there, he was the only person in that Elysium that was even remotely kind to Dakota. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that gave her any what like time whatsoever other than her own coterie. Even yep. Brett was a shithead. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, because he is a shit. I think, I think the Jackson just adheres to the old adage of uh, it's easier to lure flies with honey than vinegar. 
correct. Mm. I mean, just yeah. I mean, he's he, respect is a in his mind is the way to is the way to have. He's he's yeah. also very ruthless and can be a tyrant. Oh, yeah. But he's a kindred, definitely yeah. a kindred. But that's what I've noticed about Mathis is that the Ventru and the Toreador are so very incredibly similar. Just one is a classier. Uh, like a, a classier caddy. The other one is Mean Girls caddy. Mean Girl, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yep. chat, that's actually not true. Dakota and Rosa were the only two that ever showed up. But now we know that there was Moon inside the city who was yep. not necessarily aligned one way or the other, which mm -hmm. means he at least followed the masquerade. Mm -hmm. We know that there were some other... Lester and I, he got introduced Lester. to. Lester. Lester's mm -hmm. been here, and we found out he's, like, been here, been here for a while mm -hmm. under the... And I imagine that Bella is fully aware of him. So to think that there's only two cam-aligned gang girl, I think is what the Camarilla wants Dakota to believe. It's yeah. what mm -hmm. Bella wants Dakota to believe, and what she's finding out is that's not fucking true. Yeah. I mean, you are not wrong. There's a, you know, there's a lot of manipulation right? involved. There's so much, and, and, and I think that's part of it. It's like, yes, technically, the gang girl aren't part of the cam, which Dakota just learned right yep. nobody ever told her that she didn't know that um and she just learned that and so i think there's this shift that's like okay so this dude this guy screwed up but he doesn't speak for me that's what real politics is right it's like okay we lose one representative but i still have a voice we still have a voice and not all of us rebelled mm -hmm. with him so like you don't get to put that on my head um you don't get to do that because i bring something else to the table um and so i think that's the rise we're seeing dakota have is like Screw you. <laughs> yeah, and I mean... Screw, <laughs> screw what you say is truth. Righteous indignation. Your truth is, <laughs> right, you know, right? Your truth is not actually truth. Correct. Um, that is 100%. I mean, yeah. Uh, they, I don't want to say more than I have to in terms yeah. of that. But uh, it's... it's Yeah, it's... it's He's a bitch. What can I tell yeah. you? you know and, and, I mean? Bru and Bruja's not Cam. Oh, and when she was like, we decided not to take his head. Oh my oh, God. If there is one sure. fucking person that deserved to die in all of this, because here's the thing, had it been any of us, had it been Dakota that frenzied and fucked somebody over or all of this, they, she would have taken her head no problem, right? Yep. Or or to not or to not in any way, uh, uh, well, I guess Crecious probably has a lot to say in that, but like the Bruja, you just had a Bruja sheriff do all of this horrible stuff. His bane got him in a shit ass ton of trouble and yep. the Bruja did not get a slap on the wrist. It was very much like all, yeah. That oh, was weak. Yeah. yeah. That was weak. That, that was, was weak. weak. I was, was like, weak. oh, Bella. <laughs> so Mathis, and everybody Mathis, knew it game. too. Mm -hmm. Not a game. I, I, I'm curious. I, I don't need to know if, if, uh, if a particular person has done this, but mm -hmm. is the sheriff dead? <laughs> I don't want to answer. I don't know if I can answer that question no. right now. <laughs> I don't want to know who did it. I just wanted to know if if he's still and if he's still alive. Because if he's not, because that that would confirm or deny theories your characters have in game, correct? If I just tell you now, how about yeah, this? If he's still walking Diablo around out there, and if Dakota really thinks that he's out there in exile, she will find him. Okay, she's gonna find him because I oh Hodges, <clears throat> oh Hodges. I mean... <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I don't want to, I just, That's I'm fine. sorry. It's a tough That's, one to answer right now that because is, that is of okay. reasons. All right. Um, He's like, I can't, learn. I can't spoil it. <laughs> <I> can. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah another, another thing you talk about though is Hodges, I mean, Hodges wasn't really acting of his, fully of his own accord in right. a lot of ways. Yeah. Thanks to another uh, Fae magic that he meddled with. But now, like I said, the Fae are more or less out of the picture entirely for the most part at this point. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, I'm wondering, and I'm wondering where Damien's at in all of this because now he's very clearly like right hand to Bella at least until like a, a physical sheriff is I seated. bet they'll vote him in as but, oh they're gonna as, vote him in no problem yeah. that'll be a Jackson move I bet like a big yeah. Jackson move but the question is like if Jackson knows I imagine that he told Damien what's going on with the prince so that he can like be in on it that would be my hope but like so what is Damien's play here like is he just gonna play good good hound um, and wait until like he, we all play our he part has, yeah. yeah we all play our part like I'm interested interested in where he's at um because you know he didn't say he wanted to be sheriff he told dakota he had an interest in him being a hound um at least for a while like that was the last yeah so i'm also really um i don't know maybe maybe damien drained hodges oh 
Yeah, that's an interesting, interesting theory. But but Damien doesn't seem like to me, Damien doesn't seem like the kind of uh, NPC or at least character um, that's in it for the power struggle, right? Like yeah, he's doing for sure. this as uh, much to what I imagine Jackson's doing it as, which is a balance, right? To get rid of the old guard, we actually have to do that, which means we're going to have to like any rebellion unseat them from underneath, um, and like that slow process of always having Damien there to watch Bella might be a, a move. But I, I have a lot of questions about that dynamic, like because Jackson made it clear he and Bella aren't on very good terms but it's well known that jackson has like a bit of a a, a, a soft spot for damien and so like is that like good favor between bella and jackson to bring damien in like i just all of it's really um i don't think damien would have drained him i think damien uh out of game think, speculation yeah. damien's older generation he would have gained nothing from it interesting so, you think, think he's, he's oh is he eighth gen so he's too wow. yeah you're right he's he's got too high so um I think he's that, even like he's damn. really high in his BP as well. I gotta look. He's got damn. a high BP, yeah. Uh, he's either I can't remember. He's either seventh or eighth gen. I want to say so, I want to say eighth. Yeah, I think eighth. I'm not sure. Yeah, oh, Damien is sixth gen. Sixth gen. Well, so says Oh, Chad. that's right, because he's Chad, from Crecious. I hate to break Crecious. it to y'all. Sometimes, yep. sometimes, sometimes y'all wrong. Uh, so we're going to check the book. I will double check, but I, he, is, he is Crecious' he's child. Crecious's child. So. He is tr Crecious', Crecious child. Which is also interesting, because that's not no knowledge, right? I mean, you um, know it. I, yeah, I don't well, think our know characters it, but, I think... it, but I mean, d is it well known across the board? Because really, Jackson has seemed more like a Mawa to Damien than Crecious has. Mm. Right? Like, Crecious as a sire. Um, which yeah. makes I... sense, because if Crecious has been under a blood bond for a thousand years, and you sire a, a, a child, or the last thing you want is that child, or end up under the same bond. So, like... Oh, maybe... yeah, his BP is five. Woo! Yeah, oh, I think damn. Cool. That would yeah. be like... I don't I don't know if it's as, as much as a matter of Mala. I think he's just playing the political field because, I mean, if, if he is Damien's Mala, then he's like all of our Mala, right? Because he's he's playing the game with us too and giving us the benefit of the doubt when we prove ourselves. So My question is, why hasn't... Why, what was... Was that Crecious's, like... Oh, who better to have on your side than one of the oldest, like, just yeah, so rattiest did, bastards on your side than Crecious, man, right? Did Crecious actually, like... Was he a proper sire to Damien? Like, that's a really interesting thing because it definitely seems to me like Jackson was more of a sire than Crecious ever was, especially if Crecious has just gotten out of this blood bond. Yeah, you don't know. Hard to say. Yeah, it's very hard to say. Um, because that's but I know just, that's info Damien's, Damien's not not that old. No, he was embracing. No, he was the 80s. sired in the sixties. Yeah. Oh, sixties. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah he was gonna yeah. say he's not that old. So maybe it's a matter of. Like he took a philosophical approach as opposed to to being like, I'm your dad now, just being like, I am your care provider and you are going to learn the things that I have if you're going to live under my wing. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. And I, yeah, I just, I just, you know, cause Crucius seems like a bit of a lone wolf. The only person we ever see Crucius with is Jackson. Um, we don't ever see him with Damien. We, we, he doesn't show up to see Damien's shows. Like there's an interesting divide there where Jackson's just around more for Damien, I think, than Crecious, but like what it, there's got to be a good reason behind that because sure. Crecious seems like the kind of man uh that doesn't do shit Crecious has got his own shit going on I was about to say <laughs> Crecious has got some serious stuff going on so maybe maybe the maybe putting him under Jackson's care was just more of a care move I, I imagine he's got I imagine he's got more allies we just don't ever see it mm. I mean yeah you gotta keep in mind there's a ton of kindred in the city you've never met seen Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why people can kind of come out of the yeah. behind and be like, oh, I've never met. There's person. less than 300 kindred in the city and we've got maybe 30 of them under our yeah, belt. You know, a, yeah. Like a, yeah, you know, like a, a tenth of them. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's right, because actually Jackson was sired in the 80s. Yeah, he's got that, that power suit feel, right? Um, and so Damien was sired before Jackson. Yep. yep. Wow. Uh, he might even be a younger generation, uh, younger gen than a Jackson as well, gen. or an older gen. Or an older generation by, than Jackson, because I think top, Jackson's yeah. then like he might be the one that's eight, eight, in, eight in, gen. embraced in the eighties yeah. that I was yeah. thinking of. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you're right, yeah. and I think Damien was was in the middle of the sixties, like in the middle of the civil rights movement, um, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really interesting. Mm. Yeah, that's so uh, yeah. Damien's fourteen, y'all. He's stuck in a fourteen. Yeah, body. yeah. So yeah. It says the book. His art makes him look like he's in his twenties. He's but. like, he I, does, I thought yeah. it was like sixteen or eighteen or something. I, yeah, like, like that, some, but, me too. Late um, teens, early twenties, yeah. in my head. Technically, he's like fourteen-ish, which is also 14, very interesting. For for I mean that, I mean hell for me, I I was I was six feet tall at fourteen. Mm. I mean yeah, that's I mean fair. Sometimes, I mean he's, yeah. Maybe he's just a he was. And a, now he's like he got a growth yeah. spurt. Yeah. Maybe, and now he's like you know he's actually like sixty or seventy. Technically. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's 14, looks 18-ish. He's actually yep. 60 years yep. old. Yeah, it's nuts. Uh, yeah. But well, before we move on to like audience questions, how do you all? I mean, this is wrap up on the on this 
How do you all feel about the end of the season? What are your emotions moving forward? Like, how do you feel about how it ended and moving into the whatever comes next? I, uh, I'm very um, hopeful uh, for what is to be next. Um, I very much liked uh, Ava's closing scene. Um, as I, you know, just talking about wishes here, one of my goals for the future for Ava would be to get the Rose's support mm -hmm. and eventually get them to be on our side, basically. Um, but that's, you know, just slowly getting more notoriety with them, getting their respect. And, you know, I think that's really important to Ava. Uh, she's never really been very close with a lot of Toreador besides Sienna for such a long time. And, uh, and, and I guess Bella. So it's nice to actually, you know, be around these other Toreador. So that's something um, that is a big, big wish for for season three if there is one and yeah uh so i really liked ava's ending in particular oh yeah. wow what about everybody else i'm pretty happy with uh with with ollie's uh ollie's ending and just for some confirmation i was gonna say for, do we want to talk about this now we probably yeah should. yeah this yeah. is probably the best time um for you know for everybody watching this was uh, ollie's last show uh, i am retiring ollie um as of now he has officially moved on to to Mathis and to be an institution of Chicago. Uh, his goals, aspirations, and dreams are now on the table and immediately available to everyone. He's not going to stay hidden away from the world, but he is now trying to emotionally disconnect himself so that he can produce a place for everyone else to operate. Uh, his goal is to be an autarkis and to create a place that anyone, regardless, anarch, Camarilla, Autarkis, anyone can come through and and lay it all down. I mean, he was making good relations, particularly with um, with our Malk friend, the Witch of the Yards, mm -hmm. to to build up lots and lots of blood magic uh, on and, and wards on on this place, so that it's not just kindred that can come through; that is potentially other soups, which is what we saw at the end of this this session with uh, with Snitch. He asked Snitch to teach him everything that he knew. Teach me everything that you know about, about the Lupine because they're going to cross paths. It's just going to happen. There's no way it's not. And they need a place. They need a place for that. Uh, but yeah, that, this, was, uh, this was Ollie's last episode. And I, I'm happy. I'm happy that we got to see that in action. Uh, someone jokingly stated, like, did the zoo ever put out a note about a missing jag? <laughs> like, wait till the zoo finds out that the next jag that they replace it with also <laughs> missing. Also <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like, um, inevitably, that's like, that's Ollie's goal, right? Is to build, like, he, he saw how important Jim and Clyde were to the protection of not only the boat, but of Ava. And he mm -hmm. needs something that he feels like can be on the same running ground as him. And Kianta does that for him. He's able to just shut off and let the person in him go away and just be an animal. Mm -hmm. So Kianta was that for, for him for that. And we got some closure for Ollie and Dakota, I think, which yes. is really interesting, right? Yep. Like some, some really needed closure. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and Dakota, I think really understood what Ollie had to say of like, I got to, the things you love will be used against you. Right. Yes. <laughs> if Dakota doesn't un like, I feel like this coder really understands that uh, to, uh, to a lot of different degrees. And like, Dakota's only ever wanted Ollie to like rise to his best self. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, so yeah. who am I to stand in the way of that? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think um, uh, another uh, highlight of this, uh, I really liked Ollie's decision to take his mask off uh, yeah. for the final Elysium. Uh, I really, really did like that. Uh, kind of really embracing that NOS side for a second. And yeah, yeah I really like that. And uh, while I, there's some left strings and questions, I'm sure, uh, from plots that have been left open. Some I still wish to close up uh, in the future at some point. Others that, you know, may never get its closure, like um, the Witch of the Yards, like thing about the occasional name forgetting thing. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably wrap that up in some way at some future. But I, this is like as good as a good ending as like a, a kindred can get at the end of his story, yeah. whether it be via death or not. I mean... Ollie lost a lot. Ollie yeah. tumbled in humanity a lot. And there was tensions and arguments. And, and it's not like he had a, a, tr a great trip. And it's not like he's suddenly sitting on top of a mountain of influence and gold. He's able to step away with relative ease and peace um, while still being heavily ingratiated in the city. It's not like 
you know, it's not like Ollie suddenly gets redeemed into this, you know, 10 humanity thing that he always, you know, wished he was when he started. He just, we got to see Ollie go from that idealist, that father that couldn't let go to a proper kindred who still has a heart of gold, that, that kindred who still cares and wants to bring people together no matter where they're from, but swallowing and accepting the game that must be played. And in that, like letting go and becoming an NPC and a character who does play the game and fully ingratiate himself into the kindred politics of the world. It's about as best as anybody could hope for in terms of uh, seeing, an, and at least for me in my kind of campaigns, rather, let me be very specific, in my kind of campaigns, it's kind of like the best ending you can kind of hope yeah. for uh, for your character. And it makes sense for Ollie uh, to kind of walk away, especially after, you know, the Rowan storyline kind of got its bow. Um, and being an Artarchus means that you can't really be cam aligned direct, right? Like yeah. there's this there's this need for Ollie to actually have to distance out of those politics and build yep. his own politics, you know. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't. I don't see. You know, it's not. It's 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 always sad to see a character go, but you know, we've talked about it plenty of times, and it just it's it's a it's a good place to let it go. Is there anything that you wish you had gotten closure on that we didn't get closure on? Um. Not particularly. I, I'm i just interested to see where the evolution of Ali as the institution that he has in the city goes, because mm -hmm. I imagine it's not going to go unnoticed. No, uh, things will not. be, there's going to be a ripple effect to mm -hmm. the choice to put Ali, you know, to hang Ali up as a character. Um, I also want to make sure, you know, Grant isn't gone. He doesn't disappear from this either. I like Grant. That's as a just because you much. like playing Grant. Oh yeah, I fucking love Grant. <laughs> love Grant. And, and, and yes. Grant loves, loves, Grant loves Grant. the coterie, man. Grant yeah. loves the coterie. It's a, uh Grant is is a, a fun character to to embody every so often, but he would be he's less 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 common. Uh, yeah. I, from for for confirmation for folks, I will be I will be back in in some experience. I'm not sure what that is. Not sure if there's anything to announce yet. I haven't made another character, but. It's not going to be the last of me. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> right, right. Um, um, sorry. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we were going to, oh, shit. I just I got super oh, we sidetracked. Uh, Dakota, Grant, you're, you Dakota, were talking about Dakota, Grant dot, first. Oh. We were talking about Grant first. What were we talking about Grant? Though? Like what we were talking about? Just I'm like, no, we were just playing him and how he's not necessarily yeah. going oh, anywhere. You'll see less yeah. of him. No, no, yeah, yeah, but before that, what were we talking about? We were, we were going, we were moving room. to Dakota. Dakota's oh, Dakota, right. your ending. The ending, so were oh, we satisfied right. with where the things ended? Yeah, 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 yeah I think we set Dakota up for two major things, well, three major things, right? <clears throat> In Dakota's mind, there's still a seat open, so that's, right? And we and we got to see her, she needed, she needed the gang girl to show up to this gather, mm -hmm. um, which I think was really... She needed that like real hard and it was really nice to have it to have it happen. Um, but I think we've also set up for something that Dakota's been had her eye on and slightly worked towards for a decade, which is the lupine. There's a lupine mm -hmm. kind of story there now. Mm -hmm. And Dakota has a connection, even though indirectly with the little girl. And it's something Dakota has just had her her nose to the ground on. And now it's kind of starting to uh, sprout. Yeah, it's it might actually become something that is needed. Uh, you know, Jackson's brought up the lupine in the past, um, even even in just like conversation, like he mentioned it, and it did not go over Dakota's head. Mm -hmm. um, but then we've also set Dakota up to be less to be less of a punching bag, I think, mm -hmm. coming into season three. Right? Um, that's that's what the Houndship did for Dakota. All it did was allow her to continue to be a punching bag and when she made the decision to leave being a hound she also made a decision to be like i can, I can be more than that mm -hmm. yes can i take a punch you gosh darn tootin i've taken punches my whole life but that's not who i am so this idea that she may start showing up to creases classes or that she's learned to read and that she's begun really studying these are things that i think we um we we, we set up for um yeah so i'm very happy with dakota where dakota's at you know this idea that maybe she will get the pack that she needs out of the gangrel and what could come of something like that when was the last time chicago saw aligned gangrel mm -hmm. right yeah exactly what is all this lupine stuff who's going to talk to them is there any talking that's going to happen um and then you know the big question of like does dakota, does dakota ever overcome uh you know yeah going yeah. from a punching bag to being a commander you know a leader in some way yeah, and that's always been, that's kind of been the arc through season two is watching Dakota come to the grips. How many times she says she doesn't want to be a leader, she doesn't want to be a leader. Yeah, but you you know, you made a good point. The little girl really changed something in Dakota, mm -hmm. right? 
nobody ever needed anything of Dakota. Like, she always gave a lot. And she was always there to, like, give anywhere that she could. But she was always looking. She always had this idea of, like, I'm not good enough. I need somebody to teach me. And it wasn't until the little girl came around that Dakota's like, no, I'm fully capable. Um, and you know what? Nobody else is going to stand up for the little guy. She meant what she said to, uh, you know, to Eleanor today. Right? Mm -hmm. If oh, I yeah. had had somebody like this little girl had, would I have turned out this way? Like, would right. things be different for me? Um, and she made another great point, right? That philosophical point was like, oh, well, yeah. if you didn't go through all that and you weren't here. But that that's the idea of like, right. none of the gang will deserve this. And if I've got to be a punching bag, you're all going to have to go through me. You mm -hmm. shaped me to be this way, Bella. You taught me to read. You made me, uh, you made me the way I am. I can take a punch. I can get over all of this and I'll be smart while I do it. And so I think we're going to see Dakota like really just rise up. And then, you know, the closer that she had with Ollie, she's, she gained two, let me repeat. From season two, she's gained two humanity this season. Mm -hmm. She That's lost huge. and went down yeah. the four and then went back. At, she is now back at six, and this is the first time in, like, yeah. 12 years Dakota's even be able to have that level of humanity. Um, and what is that going to do for her? Uh, we probably saw it tonight. She cried. When was the last time we saw Dakota cry? Right now, never. never. Yeah, I was going to say, if ever. Never, right? And in honesty bella kind of broke her uh right like that elysium sure. like broke dakota in a way but it broke dakota in a way that thanks to the help of ollie and ava are going to drive her to be better i think than she ever thought she was capable of being it's um, almost like you i mean it's like almost as though dakota finally can like sees her path clearly like the light yeah, has been illuminated much clearer, brightly on right? her path and she's mm -hmm. like all right this is what I have to fucking do. Right. And if I've got to be the one that's got to wear the dress and the suit and the heels and show up so that the rest of of those like me don't have to go through your berating, then I will be that shield because you all shaped me to be this. And exactly. I'm built for this, right? Um, and I think that's that's the Dakota we're going to see. And that can be very scary in its own right. Agreed. I, I fully agree. And I, I agree 100%. Their actions shaped Dakota. And, you know, what comes is just, you know, they're reaping what they've sown at that point and that's yeah. exciting to see happen in the future yeah. you know yeah. I, I i hope you know the, the 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 goal was to end the season i think i said this off camera but to end the season on this dour almost not defeated feeling but this kind of dark shadow slowly kind of falling across chicago while still mm -hmm. having sparks and glimmers of hope throughout uh that you guys have been building over the course of all you know 80 goddamn episodes so yeah. 84 yeah. episodes at this point four episodes. yeah yeah i think um you know, chat makes a good point one of the things I'm thinking about for Dakota is actually giving up on that Fort Five and thinking about some presence powers for Dakota. Ooh. She got Toriador blood. She does. Hey. Bella. Bella did that. That's yep. all Bella's fault. Yeah, man. Yeah. That would be a fascinating, interesting twist that I not um, at the beginning of the season would never have guessed. Never have guessed, right? <laughs> no. Because I was Love like, it. I want my Fort Five dot. God damn it. I need that Fort Five dot. And now I'm like, hmm. Well, <laughs> Dakota shows up and actually has a little bit of presence and awe. What are you That'd gonna do cool. about that? Bella? I am so here for this. <laughs> you know, I'm here yeah, for that this. would be, and and you know, it would have to be Ava that really helps Dakota hone that. Yeah, um, you, know, yeah. you would so, need a teacher. Yeah. And the way I, I know it's a homebrew thing for me, but I always think you need a guide to use uh, abilities of the totally. blood that are not naturally of your clan, kind of thing. Yeah. Now. I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I imagine but, that that's something we'll never see, but Dakota will come. To yeah, yeah. For that. If, exactly. if, if things progress, you know what I mean. Like that's such a such a needed thing, and yeah, um, that would be a very interesting thing for Dakota is to really like reshape. Uh, oh, I love so reshape her. Before we ability. hand it to the audience, then um, season as a whole, you guys, everybody, uh, satisfied with the way everything wow. went? Wow. Yeah. Not it was... I, I, there were so many twists and turns. Like yeah. I'm at this. I we wish I could have so seen much. Was it too much? Notes. Was it overwhelmingly no, twist and turns? No, no, no. I just think I, I would love to know what you originally thought was going to go down. Oh right? my god! Because you you said it. We didn't expect Cami to die. We didn't expect Saito to die. We definitely didn't expect the contract on the sheriff. Because I remember uh, I actually mentioned this in Discord last week. We sat down, you and I do remember this, and plotted mm -hmm. out the things that Dakota and Hodges had done together over a 10-year period of time yep. as a, at, right? Because mm -hmm. the plan was to actually see Dakota and Hodges yes. kind of build a, my, a thing. Honestly, my him. plan was the initial plan going into season two out the gate was to see Dakota hit Sheriff at the end of season two. <laughs> that was my OG, like, nugget of an idea was to mm -hmm. have this journey uh, to see then Dakota take Sheriff. That didn't happen. <laughs> no, it didn't. But, but no. that's what I mean. It's like, I would love to have seen your outline notes of, of how 
of the plot of the plan yeah. i won't even call it like plotting the plan <laughs> or the thoughts and then yeah. how it actually kind of it, it panned out yeah so if you have I, like, throw, I don't know like you just ask questions and i will gladly tell you what yeah. i initially what i initially planned as they come to mind i'll happily throw you little nuggets of like behind the scenes did and- you plan okay did you plan on ava being Less- uh <laughs> bro, yeah like this, being this, yeah, this, like, uh, oh yeah she's this, been, uh, she's vessel? been she's been planned to be a body since uh since the beginning okay Okay. 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 All right. Interesting. Okay. Um. What else did you have planned for the other characters? Like we know, and uh, you thought Dakota was going to go the sheriff route. I thought Dakota was going to go the sheriff. I I saw, honest to God, I saw Bub doing what he's doing now, in a way, but with an added complication of Rowan still. Mm-hmm. Like that was the plan. Yeah. Was like to see you have to navigate now, whether you kidnapped because I I when when the initial Rowan confrontation in my mind, I imagined at the time. You might, your, my best guess was you would try and kidnap him, take him, try and deprogram him, get information out of him as best you can, and then have that foil moving forward of like watching Ollie try to rise while also try to hide the fact that you have Rowan, you're trying to rebuild that relationship with your son in a weird way. Like that was my original goal um, with Ollie's end. <laughs> that didn't happen at all. And, that, yeah. and, and that's just the way dice go yeah. sometimes and that's fine, but that that's like an original uh, go for me. And I, I will, I will say, uh, just you know, bear my cards to the table. I had no idea where Ava was going to go this season. I did not yeah. know where she would. In my mind, there were so many ways she could have gone, and there were so many different yeah. possibilities. Um, and obviously, the loss of Zach along the way threw things out in a wildly different direction mm-hmm. and changed the course of Ava's character drastically. Crowley's appearance yeah. changed the course of of Ava's character directly. I think out mm-hmm. of everybody. While you all took your own individual twists, turns, and ways, I didn't expect you to handle things and make decisions. Ava's was the wild card as an ST for me this season where I did not know. I couldn't really predict where Ava was going because Ava was tumbling a lot. And I saw players trying to reach out and like try to save her from that tumble. Mm -hmm. And Ava almost willingly saying no, (laughs) you know, like, fuck you. And I was like, I don't know where this is going to go. So... Yeah, I had no idea moving forward where she was going to go. There were some I times thought maybe we were she talking might backstage about her dying. Dying. Like, dying. That was actually a die. conversation. It was, it was multiple months of me thinking that Ava might not make it. You know, like, I this thought is that it. too. This is it. Yeah. Or even every time away. she went in with the prince, I yeah. had to hold yeah. my breath. I had no <laughs> idea. But every time you got put on in the spot, Ava like suddenly clicked. Like, not mm-hmm. that she wasn't clicking before, but more like you clicked into political persona. So we, we saw that Ava still wanted to live. Like, she still wanted to make power plays. But on her, on her personal life, she was like just trying to figure shit out where her place was, mm, how yeah. she was going to handle things. Because mm-hmm. every time she went to go talk with Bella, that veneer of messiness, she put away and she yep. became a Toreador and she did what she had to do. So it was just for me, I was like, okay, where is she going? Where do we, where is she trying to take this character? I mean, you and I had multiple conversations on Discord and a couple of phone calls, like voice calls on Discord of just being like, where do we want to take Ava from here? Here's what I see. What do you see? Here's what you see. Here's what I see. Yep. Um and in Ava, yeah. Ava, Ava was, yeah, Ava was the one I don't, I didn't have a plan moving forward for. And I mean, if we want to talk about Zach at the beginning, like Zach, I mean, I thought Zach would make it the whole way through a, before, you know, him dying off and the whole Malik storyline just had to get cut. Like there's a whole yeah. plot that literally had to go away that had, that had meta implications that I had to then adjust because Malik mm-hmm. going Malik dying like that, and then Zach dying shortly after, just cut strings there. And so I could never really, I mean, that's a moment where I had met a plot that I then needed to just literally mostly wipe away because it hadn't taken effect yet and try to adjust what I had put out there already as clues and restructure it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Malik was the one, so, I mean, I'll throw this out there since we're not, you know, Zach's, you know, uh, gone now at this point. Uh, Zach, the Zach plot and all that stuff, that was all... Um, like uh, the, the vision that you saw of like a male figure and a female figure of you guys thought it was like Sybil and somebody else was not, that was not the case. That was not Sybil. That was Lilith and Cain. And okay. that was the- I called yeah. that. Do you remember yes. I called that? In <laughs> and, and he, you know, made a decision on what to do moving forward. And that kind of was made clear in that, in that, well, not made clear, but was hinted at in that vision. Mm-hmm. But then when you got to him, we fucking just killed him. <laughs> and I was like, wasn't ready for that. Like you just took his head off. And I was like, okay, all right then. And yeah, we'll go from there. And then, <laughs> oh, yeah, and, then yeah. and then, you know, EE made a decision with, with Zach that got him killed. And like, it was just a, it was just one of those decisions that took a character in a yeah. direction I didn't expect to go. 
And that ended up killing the character. I mean, yeah, there's like, there's a couple of you, like, I always go into a season or a story with like a grand plot I'd like to have with multiple ways obviously can go, but I try to leave the episodes uh, or individual sessions very minimally planned. I have an idea of who I want you guys to talk to in the episode and what plot points I think are important for you to drag out now. And sometimes you get more, sometimes you guys get less. It depends on your choices. Um, but I try not to, you know, my notes are, I think for, you know, compared to other DMs, probably extraordinarily minimal um, because I approach these things as a cooperative storytelling kind of thing. You know, I don't want to have three pages of notes to try and hallway guide you down them. Mm -hmm. I want, I know this people need to show up. I know this person needs to show up and I'd like generally for this information to get out. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. And that's kind of how I go into it. You always do uh, such a good job of that, Mathis. You like, do. Like even well, with you. the I sheriff thing, it. because like we talked, we talked at season two. It was also my plan. I was like, yes, Dakota mm -hmm. making sheriff sounds great. Yes. And then when the contract happened and things kind of flipped on in, it was actually the sheriff's words of being like, you're trying to take my position, which is why Dakota was like, I've got to leave. Yeah, I have to prove to them that like I'm not actually after his political power or nobody's going to ever believe me. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I came to you and I was like, I don't think Dakota's leaving Chicago. I think she's just going to quit Hound. And mm -hmm. you were like, oh, that's interesting. And so yep. we had to like rethink like rethink it right and because yeah, we were this way and then we went that way and you were very collaborative in that process and i was like i think i really it's going to be a starting over point for dakota but i want her to gather some gangrel um yes and mm -hmm. that was just a, it was a very it, it, big shift for us and so that reinforces that idea of like just there's a lot of collaboration at this table and yeah when yes. shit goes awry because we can't plan for cammy's death we can't plan for something no. we can't plan for a contract that's going to piss the sheriff off yeah. in the next episode we got to take zach's head and it just starts to you know what I mean? All of these things we can't plan for. Um, and so I think it's really, um, it says a lot for you as a storyteller that you can take those things, run with them, and still continue to give us a really fantastic experience for the well, characters. Well, again, wouldn't yeah. be able to do with all you guys. Like, my, 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 most of my prep literally goes into, instead of, like I said, the plot, which I have an idea of the story I want to tell and kind of the major twists and turns, most of my planning and my, my work goes into creating believable characters. Like, that's where I focus most of my energy because... You know, too many times I've played with DMs, not that anybody DMs incorrectly, but the way I like to play D&D, &D, you know, too many times NPCs kind of fit these cookie cutter, this is the good guy, this is the bad guy, these mm -hmm. are the NPCs in the shop and whatnot, and you, you really want to, like, you really have to push to get the details if that's kind of character, the game you like playing, and so I always want to go in with a certain backstory, like every character I create, even if they're NPC on the spot that you suddenly make, I try it in my head to create three things that are personal to them that drive them. And I just try to play by those three things. And then moving forward, if they come back more, that's when I kind of pull apart their story and stretch them out. Because I don't, like I said, Bella could be such an easy, easy mwahaha mm -hmm. villain, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's her flaws to me and her history and her humanity that make her, to me, yeah. more interesting to play because she's going to slip up. She's going to say things she doesn't mean. She's going to fall to her own ego. She's going to make decisions that make her feel good, but uh -huh. don't necessarily make everybody else feel good, you know? She could be the Moriarty that just rules over Chicago mm -hmm. in a perfect way where you're trying to secretly stop a, a Methuselah. But how many times have you seen that on a show? And not saying that we're doing anything unique, but it's just, yeah. it adds that humanity to the story that allows like the three of you to cry. I'm not, I'm not proud of making you cry, but in a way I am because- For sure. It just yeah. means you're, in, you're involved. You're right. in, you're like in should the world. And yeah. Dot having that moment when it was all said and done of watching, here's the thing. She could very easily just be the villain but right. she's a character in our story. And I think right. that is the difference. You have turned her into a character that makes flawed decisions, yeah. right? That um, it, it does things like what she did at Elysium that probably pissed a lot of people off that very clearly was mm -hmm. a jab at Dakota oh, yeah. um, as well. And that left Dakota open to be able to have that uh, excessive moment or th those moments with Cammy, right? Where Ava's mm -hmm. got to got to eat Cammy. Uh, yeah. It's just, um, yeah, being able, to, being able to do that is just... Um, it just makes the world so rich because it doesn't feel like we're like, we're fatting, fighting a bad guy. It's like, that's the hard part. Are we the yeah. bad guy? Are that's what I want. The yeah, bad guy? Are, I want yeah. the bad are we the baddies? Yeah. 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 And I never want you to interact with any NPC and make it feel like you're just, you're talking to a, a menu of options where you're just like, I need to <laughs> say these things and buy these things. Like even when Ava and Dakota went to the black market, that character, that old lady kind of middle-aged woman was just oh, yeah. up on the spot. Like she wasn't, I didn't think of her ahead of time but I wanted her to feel real. I wanted her to feel like she was there. And I hope that you walked away with that interaction being like- The pawn shop. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The old lady mm -hmm. in the pawn shop, like she was just made up. And, but so I had a couple of things. I'm like, here's what drives her. She has this kind of past, whatever. And I wanted you to walk away feeling like she was like a real person. 
that mm-hmm. you could dig into if you wanted to and not and just other the black market lady. Too, you know what I mean? That Right. You do other things, too. Like that woman is the one that made Dakota realize that her being 18 is problematic. Well, yeah, that yeah, interaction, I, well, right? but in the best kind of way. Like it was such a genuine thing. Here's this human woman. She's like, I'm not sending you out to do bounty hunting. You're a tiny 18 year old girl, <laughs> yeah, and and, yeah. and and that was well, such a character head, moment for know? Dakota, right? Yeah. But also made her so real. It yeah. made her so genuine and human. And um, well, like yeah. when I'm ex- when I'm explaining scenes, like I know a lot of people have curious. Like I, I'm a very weirdly. I don't know how this came about, but I'm like a very camera oriented ST. Like I'm always talking about camera positions and what we're seeing fade in, fade out focuses. And yep. doing that allows me to see just the character, the NPC. And then I can kind of build, it's not like me being there and like seeing myself. I don't know, something about the visual of being able to just in my mind, just like think about it and have like a movie set in front of me. And I and like, I can kind of see how things are moving and that just in my mind, bring the character to life. So in a weird way, I feel like I'm just puppeting a movie in my head. I'm not really doing anything if there's one thing i wish i could improve on it's just voice acting god i need to be able to do more than three voices hey, <laughs> hey. i like but we work on it um uh, yeah, one man. other and i just i also really love mathis how you are really good at transitioning scenes and kind of moving forward with the plot very easily um which is something like i try to as i, I when i want to dm and things like that I, I kind of take that from you um and i really like that you're able to kind of very naturally move things along with, you know, we yeah, might just, be talking for like 20 minutes and then you're like, and then there's a knock at the door and let's move the, po- and it's just like, I wow, know a lot of things really that happen serendipitously a lot of the no, time, but, it's I don't, good. but like, like, yeah, I want things to kind of feel natural. Like yeah. you're watching a movie, mm-hmm. but still yeah. feel like, we do oh, four it's hour shows every Saturday and yeah. we get so much stuff in and you manage to like fit so much stuff in and all um, of our crazy and, wishes too. That's and that too. you take like, all of our like math is this week. I really think I'd like to go to an ice cream parlor, please. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah. I trust you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, it's been a pleasure. It's been an yep, absolute pleasure. You guys, you guys read much, as much life by interacting with these characters. As yeah. though they are just another PC at the table, you know, you don't treat them as different and allows me to become these characters very easily. Like slipping into Bella's personality is very simple now. Jackson is a fun character to inhabit. Grant is always a pleasure. There's so many, so many good characters. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, should we now go to chat then and, and yeah, take chat, chat questions? Give us those questions. Yeah. I don't know how you do these. You just want to pluck them from chat, but uh, for, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Zach and Crowley both met. Yeah, let's do Zach and Crowley best moments. There's a lot uh, for them. Zach has had so many, so many good moments as well. And Crowley was uh, such a different foil to the coterie at the end there. Um, yeah. Yeah, Crowley's death was really sad. Um, I felt I felt really horrible uh, in that moment um, because I, I, I know it wasn't like fully, but I felt responsible in some ways. And so um, that was really sad <laughs> for me. <laughs> I, I, I took that last photo or we had that last photo that we took and I thought that yep. was a really nice moment. And then I had, we had no idea he was gonna die. And it just, yeah. oh, I didn't know. And yeah. it just happened. I was like, oh my God, yeah. I felt horrible. <laughs> I think, I don't know that it was one moment with Crowley. Crowley was a really interesting character for Dakota. So. So I'll say mm-hmm. this, it was, was an interesting character for Dakota because she doesn't have a lot of positive male figures, Ollie mm-hmm. probably being one in a while. Now we have Jackson, which is a positive figure, but Crowley was kind of like a, a dad figure, mm-hmm. right? Remember when she was in that alleyway and she was just fucking tearing some trash cans up and he came out and he was like, you want to talk about it? You know, and, 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 yeah. and uh, there was a way in which Crowley actually uh, communicated with Dakota in a way that a lot of people at that point outside of her coterie just weren't. Yeah. Um, and that was very, I think there were some really helpful things that Crowley brought to the table uh, for Dakota. But my interesting point for Zach, I think um, obviously his decision at the end to not sleep with the girl was a very yes. interesting one, I thought, for, for Zach's character. Um, but we saw Zach break a little bit uh, a few times in mm. this season in a way that we did not see happen in season one that made him make some bad decisions. Or I say bad decision, made him make some risky, I should say risky decisions. There are no bad decisions, risky decisions. Right. Um, uh, which I think, you know, Saito showed up and that was a very interesting thing that got a rise out of out of Zach, I thought, um, and, and really drove him to run to deal with this thing too soon um and so it was it was a really bittersweet but also poignant yeah. moment because zach had kind of figured it out but not really and he made some tough felt, choices you know yeah i felt for eating that moment i have had a character that i thought i pieced together the puzzle and i went and jumped ahead and it got my fucking character killed too in dnd <laughs> like i thought i had had half the conspiracy put together but it, not all of it and i made some big moves and i just like i i knew i know that feeling and i felt incredibly bad for him but 
Yeah. You know, we also talked about it prior, like the death of both characters was something me and E.E. both spoke about for days and weeks leading up to the death of both those characters. So it was never a surprise uh, mm. for him. And we kept it a surprise for the players kind of yeah, on purpose. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. No, we kept that from <laughs> you guys on purpose because we wanted the impact, obviously. But it was something yeah. that, you know, all, all deaths for the most part. Well, the guest characters know, but any other death I've always, I always want to make sure the player at least understands right. that death is on the table. Like the sheriff episode, last episode. You know, I wanted to make sure as we went forward into that episode that death was a possibility there and anybody mm -hmm. could die. Yep. Um, what did Bella do to deserve being taken over? And will they see the key again? Yes, they'll definitely see the key again. Even if Ollie becomes an NPC, that's something mm -hmm. that I kind of want to bring yeah. around. That's important. I, um, yeah. I, I kind of hinted at what Bella did in the conversation with Ava. Uh, it was in a moment of panic. She attempted to take control of a power that wasn't hers. Mm -hmm. which one could make an assumption is that she tried to assert control over the shadow herself. Mm -hmm. um, what caused that and why oh, we believe in the air for okay. another time. But it was so in Matt that moment. Questions in chat, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sweet. I'm so yeah. sorry. Yeah, I did to not help realize. Us out. Uh, no, just to, just to make sure we don't Perfect. miss any. We kind of answered what are plans for Grant. Uh, we'll Ollie, go through all of them from the top. Grant? Yeah. Yep. Uh, we'll just start with the top. What uh, I really am just burning to know is how Nas is Ollie. Uh, and that was asked why? at... Little red I don't know dot. Why I well. would answer that. How nos is Ollie? I don't know. I I I, I mean, he's a Nosferatu, uh, and I'm wondering now if that's not actually a question taken to mean like because they both got naked now together. So I'm just gonna ignore that if that's how you meant that question. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I don't know why I would know how nos is Ollie. Yeah. Ollie was I mean, probably the least nos yeah. Nosferatu that you could ever meet. Like From honestly. Day one. If you, could, one. if you could pick up a Ventru and a Toreador and yeah. cram them together yeah. okay. and then you stuffed it in a Nosferatu body, then mm -hmm. bam, there you Silent go. Silent Echoes, I, I appreciate you, but keep your dirty jokes to yourself. Yeah, that's please. How you that's it. not what we're doing here. Um, uh, what are my plans for Grant moving forward? We'll see. Grant, I had plans for Grant. Grant is another plot device that never got... He didn't get the, uh, the, uh, the end I thought he was going to get simply right. because decisions were made that deviated from that, but that's that's great. Um, is an embrace of Grant actually on the cards or is it just something that he wants but will never get? I mean, again, not something I can really answer, I don't think. I don't think that can happen. Um, I, I don't I think I can answer that right now, rather. I just don't think that's something I could put forward. I can ask is how willing would Ollie be to embrace him if he approached? Hmm. And that's a question I would put on Bub, even though Ollie is kind of becoming an NPC. Ollie would wait until he knew that he wouldn't sire within blood. I was about to say, I mean, yeah, fair, there's also, uh, now more than ever, Dakota needs more gangrel. If he That's wants to true. Oh, you could. Dakota could might gangrel. actually finally have a good reason to turn him because she was like, I'll never turn anybody ever. Uh, but now, now <laughs> she needs bodies under the gangrel clan. Uh, yeah, I agree. I would I'd leave it an option for him. I'd tell him about all of the, the best parts and the worst parts of every clan from the from the take of Ollie. And yeah. say from there, it's all about it's creating enough favor to make it happen. And so with an Oz, it's yeah. easy. I could do it. It just would take some time. But uh, yeah, um, I Meaned. think I think all the players, right? All the players have sort of a soft spot for Grant, and yep, I think they he could that. make a great asset to every clan. Yeah, I agree for the most part. With uh, I just I think uh, Grant is he's an interesting character because of his flaws and, and the like. As a but for sure, I don't know. I don't. I never really. I mean, Grant's put thought into being embraced, but he has never really thought about what clan he's really wanted to go into because yeah. every time he's, it's, it's the hard part of playing VTM too. Trying to explain vampires to some mortal, it just sounds insane and stupid as you explain it. Like you're trying to give him the lesson <laughs> on the different clans. It literally sounds like some bizarre game. Like, it, and, and like to him, it's hard for him to be like, really absorb the information, just a lot of confusion. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens with Grant in the future. Yep. Uh, let's see. David asks, what kind of intel do the kindred have on the other supernatural faction, factions? Uh, well, that's an interesting answer because it depends on the kindred. Kindred well, keep their goddamn are. secrets. And while there's a general level of understanding of what mages are and what werewolves are, big scary things that you should not fuck with and mages are tricky and you can't trust them and they're also powerful in their own way, there's not a lot of detail known unless you're a particular kindred who's put in time and effort to learning about them. Because there's no... There's no grand school that kindred go to get sat down and be like, okay, today's your supernatural lesson today, class. Welcome, fledglings. We're learning about <laughs> wax a whiteboard, blue pines. Like that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, so it just depends on who you talk to. You can always assume the Tremere have most of the knowledge and they keep it lo under lock and key. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And as far as the coterie goes, I think we kind of know where their knowledge yeah. lies on them. Yep. Um, Next question is for you, Tracy. Uh, Tracy, do you see Ava with new discipline powers in the future? Would Ava get new powers in combat? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would definitely consider getting maybe some celerity into Ava. We'll see. Um, you know, I have a lot right now in, in obviously the presence and aspects, but I would definitely consider maybe. If you went down, some... if you went down obfuscate, there's some amalgam oh. powers. You and like I vanish. did. I, I could do obfuscate because I took some of Ollie's blood. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> that's true. You need a NOS to teach something? it to you, but maybe, you know, if we rescue our dear needles. Ollie would, yeah. uh, or Ollie would during be happy the time. to help. He, he could happily help you the, with with any of that. These are things to consider. I, I would like to, you know, if we reevaluate the characters, I will um, think about what kind of other disciplines. I'm curious. I like to explore other things. I really so. do want to get everybody together in between and do some number crunching yeah. and put kind of everybody in a proper power situation and, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. We really got to reamalgam some characters so, a little yeah. bit just to bring everybody in line. Uh, just a bit. Um, What's happening with Bass? What's happening with Bass? Next question. I have uh, theories. Yeah, you can only you can bring theories, but I can't say anything. I don't think Maggie's going to say anything. Yeah, I think Bass is using that that bar as a front to pick up the moving of Thin Bloods. She wanted that bar to be invisible for those that are in it. And the last time Dakota went by there, she tracked somebody she believes to be connected and or is a thin blood mm. uh, connected to the thin bloods based on what she knows of the art piece that was done uh, and before all the thin blood storyline kind of dropped off because we lost saito and all of that the what we know is that saito was moving them he was getting them out of the city so i think bass is either picking up that trail or starting her own like underground railroad type thing to 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 solve the thin blood problem um i'd say it's a good guess and a good theory we will Max, uh theory. We'll just have to let that question kind of leave there. There's not much you can say. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Was Crowley meant to die? I don't think anybody's um, meant to die. Yeah, nobody comes into this game with the ending being their death. Mm -hmm. uh, no one is meant to die. Deaths in this game have happened simply because of decisions being made. It's also mm -hmm. vampire. Everyone dies. Everybody yeah. dies. Yeah. yeah. We're all dead already. Welcome <laughs> to vampire. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, do you write your speeches beforehand, Mathis? No. <laughs> Absolutely no. not. Mathis no doesn't way. even get his coffee before we start. No, yeah. no. <laughs> I do not. Fucking true. <laughs> Listen, sometimes I do. I love you, Mathis. Sometimes I don't. It just depends on the day. Uh, no, Bro, there's been some there's been some episodes where like you brought your game, but you showed up and your hair was like, you look like the, the fucking cowboy. Yeah, I was like rolled out of bed. <laughs> Now he's in yeah. a new time zone. It's fine. Are you yeah, still? Yeah. Uh, are there still Sabat in the city? Of course, Sabat's always in the city. Even if it's only one, there's of course Sabat yeah. in the city. Sabat rolling around. Um, is Ava's yeah. obsession with Nero a political play, or is it about those incredible? <laughs> It's a mix of both. Uh, there's business and pleasure and everything. Um, but uh, ever since he was introduced with that whole music and the piano and my Mid Moon Knight Sonata, like, what the hell? Out. We've like we've already discovered this over 80 some odd sessions that it yeah. won't work out unless they can cast blood magic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah where's my new Tremere uh, you know, boyfriend coming in? I, yeah. I, I have a soft spot. I mean, we talked about, we, Tracy and I have talked about this. There's definitely some strange sexual tension between baby chorus and these two sisters over here. Yeah, that's <laughs> a hot day, I'm sure. Um, yep. <laughs> Yeah, they're in a band. What do you expect? Come it's on, like, he's in musically band. talented. Like, come oh my god. On. <laughs> yeah, oh so my it's god. a mix of you both. Did answer this, that Mathis. question. You did this. Did this I? How did I do this? Nero's a canon character. <laughs> so it's yep. Damien. Yeah, I'm glad. Oh. a true Toriador answer. I appreciate that. I I embrace the Toriador in every way. But possible. you know what? This is the first <laughs> time that we've actually seen Ava like a Toriador. Because we know, know the Brett thing is all for show, right? Oh, yeah. But like everybody else that Ava's been with, none of them have been Toriador. Yeah, I know. I know. It's going to be interesting to. Yeah, it'll be super interesting. Be with the McClan. We'll yeah. See. <laughs> um, what's our next question? The next oh. one's for you. Uh, it says, uh, curious, curious about. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, please take it. No, you say it. I'll read it out. If uh, I am very curious about Dakota's feeling about seeing Beckett again. I have so many questions about that. Well, she definitely didn't expect to see Beckett. I'll be honest with you, she did not expect to see him. And had she managed to keep her temper under control, she might have talked to him at Elysium. Mm. Uh, but she's glad he, he found out about the Gather somehow. 
which means that word is disseminating. <laughs> and that's all that Dakota cared about, uh, because this will not be the last gather that is held. But I imagine he showed up because the sheriff uh, is gone. Uh, that's big fucking news. Um, but I think she doesn't have any ho- bad feelings, if that's what you're asking. I think, in fact, it's it's kind of the opposite. Um, if he's back, shit's moving. Um, he's seeing the rise of the gang girl, which is kind of cool. Because mm-hmm. the last time he was here, they, like, hid in a park together behind a bush uh, and talked. But Beckett is actually part of the reason that Dakota got that first daughter humanity back. He is the reason that she was... His words are the words that allowed Dakota to let Rowan go the first time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because Dakota, as Hound, could have been like, no, nah, I'm just going to kill this kid on my boat. And this problem is solved, right? And she didn't. She chose to let him go. And that was after the incidents with Beckett and what Beckett had to tell her last time, which is like, you've got to find something from your past or who you were or a piece of humanity to hang on to. Mm-hmm. You have to, or you'll lose yourself. Um, and he's done that one way, right? And his way is probably not the way Dakota's going to go. She's going to do it through. Yeah. She found her own path. She found her own path, which is what he said. You have to find your own path. And it was his words that actually probably from anybody's this whole season, except for maybe the first time she interacted with Jackson, mm. changed her the most um, and really, really moved Dakota, Dakota towards something. So to see him come back is kind of like a gold star for her. Um she might even pat herself on the back a little bit uh, uh, for that one, which she doesn't get to do often. So I think it was, um, there was no bittersweet to it. It was a very proud moment for Dakota, for yeah. Beckett to come back, whether he did it for her or for Elysium, but to be there, it means a lot. I, I, I agree. Uh, bringing Beckett back obviously has implications. Beckett doesn't show up for nothing. He doesn't just show up at any random Elysium. As he's just, he's a, he's a rare appearance. And usually when he's around, it's because shit's going down. Uh, tape, is a by the way, the, the tape yeah. was the, uh, the, the close. So I, a couple of people have asked this like for a while now. What was on the yeah. tape? Uh, that was what has been planned for a couple of sessions now. That was the conversation between Ollie and Matthew. Uh, it was the recording, and that's what he wanted to pass. Like He knew that he wanted to get to Beckett, but he wasn't allowed at the gathering. That's that's a gangrel thing, and he's not going to have another opportunity to get to him. So she, he basically said, if you see Beckett, give this to him. It's all of Matthew's. So Matthew um, recorded everything. And now Beckett has information on the shenanigans of Madison. Yep. Which is very helpful because Dakota filled him in last time, but was like some weird shit's going on. There's like some Faye and stuff. I can't totally explain it. Basically, this tape from Ollie's going to fill in some blank spots for Beckett's story. Yep. I'm excited to see where that ends up going. Uh, what, what was, was up, up with Beckett? Beckett? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was up with Beckett and the woman he was talking to way back in there? Oh, the setup. The setup. The opening scene. Um... I'm not going to answer that yet. I wonder what happened to Thin Blood Saito was teaching. I assume Saito would have contingencies in place in case of death. That, yeah, uh, Saito had a bunch of contingencies in place. Of course um, again, you can't have, I mean, I can't always, you can't give it camera time because uh, it just would bog down, you know, unnecessary plot stuff. But yes, everything, mm-hmm. uh, Saito had contingencies upon contingencies set up for everything he had going. So um, it just because he's gone doesn't mean what he was doing stopped immediately. Certainly things have changed over since he's been gone now, but yeah. Uh, how far along has Mathis been planning from the beginning? I'm playing my own game, but I have trouble planning far ahead of my plot. Um, well, I had an idea. It's, it's hard to say because like the, the minutia of every season is not planned, but I had a grand, I mean, I walked in, I think I even said this, I mean, not, I'm not trying to spoil anything here, but when we began this when we began this episode one, season one, I had said to everybody, I had a three season arc in mind. I have an arc in mind. I went in with what I wanted the big bad to be, what each season should generally be uh, tonally uh, and the kind of general personal stories or at least arcs that I was hoping to aim for in each of the seasons. Um, So I'd say I have the general big plot more or less in my head, but little stuff, characters, side stuff, some of it's planned, some of it's not. It just, you can't, you can't go into planning, you know? Yeah. I, uh, that's just not how I, 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 I roll as a ST because it's just, it, it ended up causing me more headaches than anything else. Cause it's more the, like, um, you seem like a very sandbox GM to me, Mathis. Yeah. Mm. That's what I was grew up with, with sandbox GMs. So that's kind of the mm-hmm. style I adopted over time. Like I played basically 18 years with the same DM straight and he's a sandbox style guy. And that's just kind of the thing I adopted and, uh, just kind of go with, I kind of go that way. Because some of the most, 
amazing stuff happens simply improvis improvisationally. And so if you have a plan moving in that suddenly wouldn't allow that amazing scene to happen, then you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. So yeah, I guess I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. uh, what was up with Beckett and the woman he was talking to uh, way yeah. back? Oh yeah, we already got that one. Uh, yeah. I think there was only one left. Uh, that's about, I think Maggie said what we got time for, which is, are there any Ravnos uh, salubri in the city? Uh, I mean, maybe. <laughs> that's uh, The thing with the Ravnos and the salubri is that they the rules for them came out really late in the season. Uh, so there was really not an opportunity for me to really in ingratiate them without feeling like, at least to myself, that I was just putting too forced. much. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like, new stuff, new stuff, new stuff. So yeah, it is, it's the same why we didn't swap right over to like Ken in Chicago. And it's just a slow yeah. trickle yep. uh, of Ken stuff because I don't want to overwhelm both the viewers and ourselves. So yeah, uh, yep. I, I guess likely there's probably a couple around, but in my own mind, it's not even something I've put thought into because there's not, there was no point or benefit to doing so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is, uh, is anything else? Did I miss anything? I think we probably did. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but that was like the big stuff. Um, I don't know. I guess we should probably wrap up questions. Um, yeah. says Maggie. Maggie's giving us the cue. I don't right, know. Cool. Okay. So, so while we wait on like that, I would like to know what our wishes for next well for our if there is a next <laughs> if we move into know, a season three. if we move into a season like what is what is the because i know bub you're in a weird place because you don't even know what you're playing but like do you have a wish or like a thing or i don't know let's go around mathis you too i mean I, if you want me to start i will i mean yeah, you I, start I, yes. I just want to i'm excited to see i'm just excited to see the, the general theme that i want in that season if i get it to play out because i i hope season two felt totally different from season one and i want season three to feel slightly totally different from season two um, so I, I just want, all I want to see, I, is what your characters look like at the mm -hmm. beginning, because there will obviously be a jump in time. Mm -hmm. And at the end, when hopefully everything has been answered, I, I, uh, I can't really answer that question too much because I kind of already have ideas and stuff. So <laughs> yes. leave that elsewhere. <laughs> How about for Ava or Tracy? For the future, um, I did talk about this a little bit earlier, but definitely continuing the the Rose relationships that I have going on, um, mm -hmm. getting getting deep in the Tory doors. Um, I'm really, you know, excited for that if that happens. And then, uh, honestly, just Ava and Dakota, like we're it's going to just be us two um, after this and the originals. <laughs> and so, you know, I I really want our our bond to grow even closer. Um, and I want to have opportunities to really see that uh, in role play and throughout different scenes. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that'll be something um, that I look forward to in, in season three. We'll have each other's backs in like no way we've ever really had. So yeah. yeah. I, it's true. It's super I true. really am looking forward to how that's going to play out. Yeah, I am too. Very excited. Yep. Um, what about you, Dot? Oh boy, things I hope to see. I am very interested in seeing Dakota gain some respect. I think mm. that's something that is is due time for her and maybe will come out of Bella's very poorly run Elysium. I'd really love to see um, her gain some respect with the right people or like, maybe not even the right people, just some people. Um, uh, yeah, uh, but I too am very interested in, in mm. what's going to happen. I, I would like to see Dakota rise in a different way. There's a reason she didn't want to be sheriff. She didn't want people to fear her. Mm -hmm. um, she felt like she had a lot more to offer than that, right? Like it came down to that. She doesn't, she didn't want people to fear her. She wants people to recognize that she really does actually have their best interest at heart. Um, she didn't want to be a weapon for the prince. Yep. She, she oh, yeah. wants something else. And so, um, yeah. you know, I, I think that this is a chance for her to like put her claws down for a minute and try to flex in a different way. Um, and so I'm very much looking forward to seeing if, if she gets that opportunity and what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, also, I don't. I want us to to thwart Sybil's plans. That's the big thing. And then let Ava not not become the body of the freaking, uh, um, of the OG to be OG? Know, to be destroyed. Knows nobody knows. His name. Yeah, I was. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we'll so see what happens. Hopefully, there. we can save <laughs> Ava. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Bob? Yeah. Um, man, I I don't know that. Um. Uh, even even simply assuming that there's immediately going to be a season three, I'd have to say that whatever I do, I'm going to subvert expectations. Uh, I don't like playing into the stereotype, and I think it's obnoxious when people force these bizarre 
um, uh, constraints upon a clan. Like mm -hmm. if you play a Nas, you have to do this. If you're not doing this, you're doing it wrong. Like take your purity elsewhere. It's it's lame. Um, but I I'm looking forward to whatever I end up playing. It's if if I play it, it's gonna be something that's not what all that at all of what you you would expect. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be um, diverse and different and unlike anything that you've seen me play in any VTM experience. Ooh. I mean, that's held true on the characters I've seen you play in yep. both now. You know what I mean? Yeah, so for it's, sure. It's, yeah, I'm excited to see uh, what comes forward for season three if we get a season three. Um, yep. But uh, the journey has been amazing so far. So thank yep. thank you guys for playing with me. Thank you, Roll for it for allowing us to tell these yes. stories. Thank you. Um, the thank viewers you. for. Thank you, Maggie, it. for being yes. our production for yep. all yes, these thank weeks. You. Like you, you rock. Thanks to all of you for making the show possible because you support yes. and stuff. And I imagine that if you keep doing that, maybe they'll let us have a season three. That's and just go tell not... some friends, man. Yeah, it's not yeah. just go tell. It's not just about Patreon support. It's go grabbing a friend. Tell yeah. your neighbor. Put tell your cat. Yeah, you you know, we're not going to be around every Saturday for a while at the very yeah. least. So go, now's the time to go have your friends freaking binge. Yeah, binge. And catch up. The hours <laughs> or you can content. do what I say. If you really hate us, just go tell your enemy instead. We'll take sure. it. I'll take <laughs> it. Their that eyes and ears are just as good sure. as your yep. friends. Yep. Yep. Uh for sure, for sure. So yeah, share it about. Thank you maybe, again, maybe everybody. Some, yeah, yeah yes. share it. Guys. Thank you. We Thank will, you, everybody. Uh, we'll see you around one fashion or another. Yep. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.